Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Good. God bless you. Welcome to High Ground Christian Church. I'm Pastor James Ziegler. And, and listen, I appreciate you stopping by here to hear a quick word from God today. Listen, we are, uh, you can catch us either on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, live, uh, and uh, and by next week, you, you should see us on TikTok as well. But listen, uh, vision statement, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it says, if then you have been raised with Christ and seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things on this earth. I wholeheartedly believe in that. And I, and I, I want you to as well. Let me pray. And then we're going to go straight into the sermon. Lord, I thank you for the day. God, thank you for the morning. Uh, forgive us for any distractions that kept us away from telling you that we love you. And, and telling you thank you for this day. And, and, and I'm asking that you keep every single person that hears the sermon and keep all our brothers and sisters, God, wherever they may be, God, that uh, no hurt and harm and danger will come to them or even in their minds, God. Okay. Keep us. Keep us strong, God. Keep us sturdy uh, in you, God. Keep our faith strong, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. And we thank you. And I ask that you bless the sermon today that someone may hear it and understand what you're trying to say in your word, God. We give you glory and honor right now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good. Listen, uh, I, I just want to move on real quick. Uh, I want to preach about this sermon, and, and, and it's favorable to some, and some are going to be like, oh, I didn't want to hear that. I, I need something else. But it comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. And I know many of us don't really care because we want the opposite of what I'm about to preach about. So if you go to 1 Timothy 6 and, and verse 6, it says, Now there is great gain in godliness and contentment. Now that's what I want you to first know. There's great gain in godliness with contentment. And then the rest of it says, For we brought nothing into this world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. Here it is. This is what I'm going to preach from today. Verse nine says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmless, harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. <laughs> today, the title of my sermon is, what is your true desire? What, what is it that, that you really care to do in your life? Today, I want to discuss what it is really in your heart and what you want to achieve while living here on earth. I, I, want, I, I like to know that. Uh, God had questioned me about it, and, and I, I'm, I'm asking you, what is it that you want to achieve while living on earth? Uh, uh, I, I'll start off by saying many of us want to be rich. That's the first thing, everybody. We want to be rich so that we can be able to splurge anytime we want, to live a lavish lifestyle like the rich and famous. Y'all remember that show? The lifestyle of the rich and famous, and they go to people's houses and show their cars and stuff. We want to drive whatever car we want without having to worry about buying it with money and insurance payments. And when it break down, we got to figure out how to get it paid. All these shade tree mechanics come try to trying to fix it. But if we had the Bentley, uh, uh, the Rolls Royce, Phantom, or the Bugatti, the Lamborghini, the Porsche. Even the Jag or the Mercedes. We we want everything at that our little hearts can desire. We want those type of things. The houses, you know what I mean? The clothes, the shoes, the vacations. And some people they want the jewelry just so people can see how much money they have. That's but 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 I want to ask you a question. It is is this really a good thing? Is this what we're living for? Is, is this really what we want people to remember? us for just by saying we had a lot of money and we did a lot of things. Do do we all really need to be rich to gain all the worldly possessions and to be noticed by men? Is, is that what we're doing? Do, do we need everybody to have everything that they want and can think of? I mean, can you imagine if God blessed everybody with it? <laughs> Everything they ask for. It'd be a lot of dead people because some folk ask God, listen, give me the money and kill them off. Now, now let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. If you are like me, though, then yes, you have desired to be rich before. 
It's, and, and, and if you're still truthful, you still think about those things right now and, and, and wish you could have, have a drop. You know, you can buy anything at the drop of a dime. You know, you just wish you could do it. But let me start off with, with the top of the scripture where it says, now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. I point this scripture out because it tells us that no matter what you may get on this earth, there is great gain when you have God. It don't matter how many cars you have and how much money you have. That doesn't gain. You, you're not going to get what you're going to get if you have God. Some people don't understand that having money sounds good. I shoot in my head. I got like shoot. That sounds good, but you are you you are way more powerful and, and more rich when you have God in your life. I, I want you to know that. Uh, uh, I, I want to encourage you to make sure that you keep God in your life and not just thinking about these other things. Some of us will n never be content with what God has given us. We always want more when when we already have a lot. You understand what I'm saying? You you ask God for certain things, you and we always want more. And, and and we think that we don't have it just because we see other people with all this other stuff. But but like I said, some people don't understand that having money sounds good, but you are way more powerful and more rich when you have God in your life. Here's, here's number one. Point number one. Money makes you interesting, but God makes you rich. You understand, like, if I have God, I may not have the money, but I have everything I need. Uh, this point is to say that you can walk around and, and not be financially wealthy. But if you have God in your life, this is what's going to matter in the end. Because the reverse of that is uh, you can walk around and have all the money in the world. But if you don't have God, the money is insignificant. In the end, it doesn't help you not one bit. I I, I went to, uh, I, I've always dreamed of having so much money. I, I, I was like, Lord, if you can give me so much money, I can take care of so many people and families and still travel and fly around the world and enjoy the finest things in life. But I have come to the to the realization that that having God in my life is much more important than any of these things. Spreading the word of God and, 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 and having people focusing on who God is to them is something that is of most importance to me. Making sure that people love God. Making sure that people live by the word of God. Here it is in Matthew 6 and 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I like to read the scripture. Uh, you, even for myself, I like to read the scripture to keep me focused on what my mission is and what I want to achieve in life. Once we put our focus in the right direction to God, then he will in turn give us the desires of our heart. But we first have to follow the plan that he has put in place for our lives. Some people think, oh, he just need to make me rich. So many times we get distracted by what we see. And sometimes by even sometimes by what we hear. And it, and it could be the wrong thing that has gotten our minds in another place. Distracted. I, I was talking last night about this, just distraction. And, and now our minds are focused on those things that may be wrong instead of focused on God that make things right. We, we just got these wrong thinking. And, and here it is even with money. That's why in Psalms 27 and 37 and 4, it says, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of thine heart. And I always hear people quoting the scripture wrong, I would say. They, they quote it wrong by saying, God will give you the desires of your heart. Yes, God will give you the desires of your heart. But they miss the first part where it says to delight thyself in the Lord. That's first. We're always putting the cart before the horse and things can never be in order when you do these type of things. When when you only use part of the scripture, God will give you the desires of your heart. But the first part says, delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So here's my point. Number two, let let God be your first desire and everything else will follow. Just, 
Let, let God be your first desire in everything that you do. I don't care if it's in, in your home, in your marriage, in your job, with your friends. Wherever. Let God be the first desire. And everything else will follow. Things will fall in place like they should. Uh, verse 7, if you read this, uh, first, verse 7 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and, and we cannot take anything out of the world. I, I, I was... I had I had a chance to go to two different funerals yesterday. One one at eleven for for an eleven year old boy, and then one at one o'clock for an eighty seven year old man. And, and and neither one of them were taking anything with them to their grave. Neither one. And and, and I'm praying for both families. Uh, the older man, uh, Deacon Walker, a good friend, been a, a, a deacon for years and. He passed away, but God bless him. He, he lived a good life. And then the 11 year old, uh, praying for uh, Jeremiah and, and their family because this little boy, they said he wasn't going to make it to live past five, and he made it to 11. And, and I thank God for it. But what I'm telling you is that this scripture says, listen, if, if you think that you're going to bring something in the world and, and you, don't, you didn't bring nothing into it, you're not taking nothing out of it. And, and listen, I know our ambitions are to have as much as we can while we are here on this earth. You know, try to get as much as we can. Be ballers. But what is it for? And I, don't get me wrong. It's, it, it would be nice. It's nice to leave an inheritance for your family. The Bible even talks about this. But if that's not what it's for, then what is your desire to be rich? What is it for? What, what would you do with it? You know, people are always talking about, oh, I'm going to help some people and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, folk always say that stuff. And you ain't helping nobody now with the $2 you got. You know, you, you, don't, you don't help nobody. You ain't trying to help nobody. So when you get millions, what, what you going to do with it? What, what is it for? How are you going? How you going to be there? Be there to help other people. It's nice to leave an inheritance, but if you don't, if you don't have the money to do it, and, and that's not what you're doing, what is it for? Because in verse eight it says, "But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content." And I know this is hard to just be content with with the things that God gave you. With, I got some new shoes and a suit on and all, all that. No, but we're not content with that. We're not content with the things that God has given us. But but if you were grateful, if you were grateful for the things that he already gave you, he will gladly give you more. <laughs> That's the problem. Some of us ain't even thankful for what we got. But you first have to be content and thankful for what you have. And, and, and I, I tell you, even, even with family, even with loved ones, even with jobs, even with money, finances, God, thank you. You're always making a way. Even when I don't have it, when I don't think I have it, you do something. Even if I got to wait until the next month, God, you do it. You make a way. I, I, I get this. I, I I see a lot of rich people. As a matter of fact, I, I know a few of them. And so many of them are not always happy. They, they money cuz money can't bring you happiness or joy it can bring you some temporary happiness and fun and stuff but i still see them and they not happy i always feel like there are many of us that don't have that kind of money but we always seem to find joy in what god has given to us at that time and that's where your life ought to be I, i'm just happy with what god gave me right now uh, I found, a, as a matter of fact, the other day I found a dollar bill. I found a dollar bill on the ground, and and I was so excited about that dollar. <laughs> you would have thought I had won the lottery. Well, it wasn't that much excitement, but I was grateful. I was grateful the, for the dollar. I appreciate. I, I appreciate when God does anything for me. When He gives, God gives things that I wasn't expecting. I I, I appreciate it, and I tell Him thank you. I, I, I washed some clothes one time, and, and after the clothes washed, I found a $20 bill in the washing machine. I get excited about that kind of stuff. And then you say, why are you being excited? You know, I, I'm excited because God allowed me to retrieve something that could have stayed lost. It could have it could have been lost somewhere else, but he let me find it. God is, is very kind to us, but but we 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 can't see it sometimes. And 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 he's kind to us beyond what we can see. And some of us don't need to be rich. We just don't need to be. I, 
I, t- I, uh, I already know if if I had been rich in my early years of my life, as, as much as I've done in my life, if I had been rich, I may have really gotten off track. I I I, I may be somewhere strung out or something. Nah, I don't like that. I, 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 I would have been in some trouble. God understands these things and help us to grow gradually to these things. He helps us to mature so he can give us things like that. Verse nine says, but those who desire to be rich, they fall into temptation. Y'all, y'all missing me. First Timothy six and nine. It said, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. What what are you saying? Listen, money has never done anything wrong to anybody. It's not the sin. It's the person that starts to sin with the money. And when you think about these types of things, you think about people like like uh, one of the former presidents of the United States that has has had so much money in his life that he has done a lot of foolish things that have come back around to tarnish tarnish that name that he has placed on so many buildings. And he's not the only one that has gotten off track in this way. There are, there have been many rappers and actors and even some preachers <clears throat> who have fallen victim. To, to their harmful desires of the world because of money. I'm not saying all these people are real bad people. They're just human. But but because they wanted to be rich, because of the money, they, they fall into the wickedness of what the world has. And, and, and some of us see these things and wish that we had the, that money to do and say what we want to others. Because that's what happens when people get a lot of money. They can do and say what they want to other people. And, and, and this is not a good reason to be rich. Many of us say that we want to help people, like I said, and, and help the homeless and, and, and house people who need help. But, but truly, once you get your money, you, you're going to be out of here. And you, and you don't want nobody to find you ever again. Not even your family. You're like, I'm gone. Going, going over to the Cayman Islands, and I come back and forth, and I ain't tell, tell nobody I'm in town, I'm changing my phone number. We see this kind of behavior even when family members die. You know, like when family members die, everybody start fighting over what they got, or what the person had, what they died. If, if they leave one penny, we see family members fighting over something that wasn't even theirs to begin with. But, you know, I, I and that's that mindset of how money can can change your mind. So my point number three is don't lose sight of God being distracted over money. I'm asking you, don't lose sight of God being distracted over money. (laughs) Somebody was just uh, talking to me about uh, different platforms to minister on so that I can gain uh, some more money while preaching. <laughs> and I, I, I giggled and laughed. I'm like, I, I don't preach for money. I don't. I, I don't get paid to do this. I explained that I have never been comfortable trying to get people to give money to the church. Like, like m- my first mindset is to preach God's word so that people are encouraged to live right and, and do right. I understand that the church needs finances to fund certain things, but but if if, if I put my trust in, in my desire in God first, then he'll he'll send those who will help fund the things of the church t- to do kingdom business. You know what I mean? I would rather have God's favor over, over me rather than the, the world's money. I, I, I'm not worried about that right now. I, I think that can come. We can go make money on our own. So I'm asking, what, what is your desire? What what is it that you think about uh, in your life? Now, I understand everybody wants their bills paid. They don't nobody want to struggle and all that. But if you were rich, what's your desire for it? I mean, Proverbs twenty two and one says, "The good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold." I want God to say that that when He sees us and when, when we get to heaven, I want Him to say. The things I asked you to do, you did them. You you were walking uprightly as much as you can. And in return, you get my favor. God has favor over you. And, and he has favor over me. Like, hey, I, I love you. I'm going to take care of you. 
As much as I would love to have money to fund different organizations and churches that really help people, people that really help folk, because I've been meeting some preachers that really help. I want to fund those type of things, help out. But I, I would still rather have the favor of God so that I won't be tempted by worldly things. Getting your mind off, having some other people be involved to help us get it taken care of. I was reading uh, <clears throat> something David said in Psalm 73. If you go to Psalm 73, I started at verse two. It says, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. <clears throat> they, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are, are not plagued by human life. <clears throat> Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with, with violence. From, from their callous hearts comes iniquity, which is sin. The evil imaginations have no limits. I was reading what, what David was saying here, and he, and he was asking God to forgive him for for looking at all these people that had so much and they were arrogant and, and they were living in sin and they had violence and, and they would play, but it looked like they were living good. Their life, they were never was sick, all that, all, but they were doing some wrong things. He said, forgive me, God. <clears throat> I, I almost, I almost slipped all over that stuff. These are the types of things that can happen when, when we suddenly get some money. Uh, I, I, I'm tell you this story. I actually know we actually know this lady <clears throat> that had won a settlement. She, she won a settlement and had over a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm talking about in cash. No education, not didn't have a lot to, where to put this money. She was living on how on the hog. You know how they say living how on the hog. And, and she was talking, walking around with so much pride. Folk all around her and everything and, and just taking her money. And the way she spoke and acted was horrible at that time. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden the money was gone in two months. I'm talking about gone. Nothing to show for it. And now she struggling again. She struggles again. And, and the few people that were around her are gone. The money wasn't the sin though. That's, that's how quickly somebody can turn. Being humble, arrogant, lose it, you back humble again. A and working. Yeah, at first, she wasn't even having to work. The money don't do anything wrong to anybody. It never does. It's us. It, it, it was this lady who had changed into something that would plague her with iniquity, with, with sin. And, and it's hurtful to watch people go through these type of things and you say, God... Have mercy on these kind of people. So here's my point number four. Be careful that your thoughts and imaginations aren't lined when they're not lined up with God. Be careful that you're, you're, what you're looking for in life and, and thinking you should have, if it's not lined up with God, it, it's not going to work. If, if, if this happens in life where, where you are looking more at at the money than God. Remember our vision statement, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it says, if then you have been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above what Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set, set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things on this earth. And, and then after I, you read that, if you really go to Psalms 51 and 10, it says, create in me, God. I, what I want you to do is create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, oh God, and, and, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. I, I preached about this last week about restoration. I'm, God, restore to me your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then what I'll do, God, if you do this for me, I will teach transgressions your way so that sinners will turn back to you. And this is what, what I, I want to preach. I, I want to preach to where people turn back to God and say, God, it's you. We love you. No, Nobody else. 
I, I, I can't get by by loving nobody else but you, God. Even the money is not going to do it. it. I could have it and lose it all in one one night, God. I could have it for the rest of my life and be miserable for the rest of my life. God, I want you. What What is your true desire? Point number one, make money makes you interesting, but God makes you rich. <clears throat> Number two, let God be your first desire and everything else will follow. Number three, don't lose sight of God being distracted by money. And then number four, be careful that your thoughts and imaginations, if they're not lined up with God, I'm asking you, what is your desire? Because all of our desires are not the same. And, and, and my desire is to please God. Listen, uh, the reason we preach these type of sermons, and I got to preach about everything, uh, every, every topic today is just having to be about this lustful mindset of wanting to be rich and having money and, and, uh, mm -hmm. but everything has, has its place. But here, the reason we preach that is Romans chapter 10, verse nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. And I, and not only do I want you saved, I, I, I don't, Lord knows I don't want you to be struggling because some of us, having to do it and, and do things that we don't even want to do just to make some money. Yeah, like, God, get me out of the situation. Move, move me to another place, God, you know, and, and so that I don't have to worry about those type of things. Listen, today I, I want to take the Lord's Supper, but I do have a song I, I want to play. Uh, uh, it's by Fred Hammond. It's called Give Me a Clean Heart, and, and I, I want you to hear this and just ask God, Give, give me a clean heart, God. Uh, this song is for encouragement. This song does not belong to me. Please listen in and enjoy. <laughs> And I will say nobody but you be a to lose the double money to lay everything. Just lay your hands on me a and I'll be, I'll be friendly. I am my strength and shame. I will send it and I will say, Give me a clean a bed or a library to believe you tell me and stick with it all the way. Just lay your hands on me, Lord, and I feel me brand new. I'm coming now to you. Keep my heart from fainting. This is all I know. Just lay your hands on me, Lord. And I will be with no and I will say, No, won't you play now? Won't you say?
Scripture says uh, Jesus was giving his last uh, instructions to the disciples and, uh, before he got ready to die. And he, he told them, he said, this bread represents my body. Uh, as, as often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me, eat this. And he prayed over, he said, Lord, uh, bless this bread. And let it uh, be an example of Jesus' body inside of us. Uh, and, and let it be food and help to our bodies, God. Let it nourish us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Take it and eat it. Likewise, he take some juice and some wine also. He said, this is a new covenant, new revelation, New Testament of my blood. He said, as often as you do this, do this and remember some me. And he prayed. He said, please bless this God, bless this juice, bless the wine God, that when it flows through us, bless, flows through our blood vessels and our veins, God, let it be a representation of who Jesus is to us, God. We give you glory and honor in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I tell you this, um, I read a scripture that says something, the reason that some of us are sick in, in things of that nature and our health is, is bad is because when we do this part, um, taking the, the, the sacraments for Jesus is that we do it in the wrong spirit, wrong mindset, wrong heart. And sometimes we have things uh, that are, are oppressing over our lives and distracting us. And I, and I ask in your future, if you take the Lord's Supper, make sure you clear, your, clear the way, clear your mind for, for who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Listen, again, Today's sermon, what, what is your desire? What is your desire in life? I hope things work out for, for you and me. I, and even if he does make us rich, God, we're going to do the right things with the money and bless some people. Amen. So we give you glory, God. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your love and your compassion and your grace and your, and your mercy. God, I ask that you bless the people, God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I'll see you back here on Tuesday. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Have a good day off. All right. God bless you. Get you some rest. <laughs>